it's like I'm shouting, but I'm sorry, I'm too close. I'm trying to stay away, um, far away from the audio. And also I'm Persian, so I have that loud voice, but I have the beautiful Patricia. I'm so happy you're feeling a lot better. You were it's truly funny. missed from the round table. Um, but I have you here again. I love remote viewing with you, but for, you know, when we do, this is the pyramids we're doing. Um, Patricia is more advanced with me doing the pyramids. So uh, I'm super excited. I'm nervous at the same time. So I have a lot of new subscribers. Um, if you want to know more about Patricia, she does have an upcoming workshop that I'm going to be there. And I also provided the link in our last remote viewing when we did our Mount Shy stuff. Um, so I'm going to put a reminder on her upcoming workshop um, with if you want to know about, you know, secret, um, you know, like how to dive deeper in your abilities and reveal more information. I'm going to let Patricia really quick talk about her upcoming um, workshop. Um, I do know a lot of people are interested and I'm going to provide everything for you. And then also I want to, you know, people who don't know Patricia, she is an angel, a goddess. <laughs> so I'm going to let her hand it over to her right now. Ah, thank you so much for having me. It is such an honor to be able to do this with you. Um, and I, the, with the pyramids, I was actually supposed to be in Egypt this past June, but because of COVID and the restrictions and everything, um, I wasn't able to go, but, um, yeah, it's just going to be awesome to be able to, um, share the information that I saw and, and see when I tune into it. Um, so the quantum psychic course that I'm going to be teaching, um, starting on July 28th, uh, gives you guys a deeper glimpse into how I do what I do, because I truly believe that everyone is psychic. All of us have this ability. It's just who's delving into it. It's kind of like, well, if we have 10 fingers, we can all play the piano, but how many, you know, can play like a concert pianist. So, uh, with this course that I'm going to be teaching, it's four Wednesdays for an hour and a half from seven to eight 30 mountain standard time. Um, and, uh, yeah, I go deep, I delve deep inside the matrix and show you guys your own capabilities. So it'll be fun. I'm really glad that you're going to be joining me. This is going to be awesome. No, I'm so excited. Um, so guys, um, I hope the audio is okay with everyone. Um, so yeah. So Patricia, how do you want to do the pyramids? Do you want me to go first? So we're going to just, I'm going to just see what I get and maybe you can explain and go more deeper because again, you're the advanced <laughs> um, <laughs> one here. So um, yeah, so let's get this started, guys. Just give me a second. I'm just trying to get myself. Okay, let me see what I can pick up because I'm always used to using my whiteboard here. I don't have my whiteboard. It's in the back. So um, give me a second. Um, so what I see is with the who built the pyramids, I feel like the pyramids were built by these extraterrestrial beings they're very high frequency high dimensional beings they they have this blue skin color um i do see like half creature half male woman or half human half creature it's it's like their upper body's human the lower body's it's animal looking um, it's weird why I'm seeing that, but I, I'm seeing that very strong, but they have this blue, you know, coloring their dress very differently. They have this like gold um, drapery, you know, and I feel like um, they're, it's like they're moving their, their mind like telekinesis. Um, they're able to make, build the um, pyramids by telekinesis, like with their own minds. Again, these are high dimensional beings. And I don't, I feel like the way they said the pyramids were built by slavery or by, you know, by past history. I don't believe that. I think that's something that was created false. I think there's a lot more that people don't know about our history, our earth, because earth is very old. Um, but I do feel that, you know, these beings are there. Um, these are pyramids to me, I, I see like, um, it's like, like lights, like shoot. when I go inside, there's these shooting golden lights, like on each corner, like shooting laser golden lights. Um, when I'm in there, I feel like a God, like a God and goddess, you know, and I do feel like it's, it's so powerful. It makes me feel like I, I, I feel power, like lots of power. I feel like a God. I feel like a goddess. You know, I feel like this is like some kind of vortex, some kind of transportation, teleporting, you know, but I just see these gold and beautiful lights all around each of the edges of the pyramids. It's very beautiful. And there's like some symbols all around the walls. You know, it's like they're 
their history, their, their blood, their ancestors, like their, their bloodlines, you know, um, their markings on the pyramids. It, it, it means something. It's very symbolic. Again, it's their bloodline, it's symbols, it's meanings, it's their language, um, it's secret coding. Um, I also feel in the middle, I see a stream, like there's some kind of stream. Um, it's like when I go inside this water and I come back up, it makes me more powerful. It's very healing. Oh gosh. I, I just, it's just, I just feel like, right. it, like, like, I don't know. I can't explain right. it. It's, it's like a grid. I just feel like some kind of like a golden DNA. It's like changing my DNA. It's, it's like a, almost like the tree of life, like the golden tree of life, but it's something to do with golden DNA strains. It's like changing inside me. I, I just feel so, um, oh, not awakened, but so much wisdom, so much information and downloads. Again, I keep on saying, I know I'm repeating. I feel like a God and a goddess. It's so much energy, so much power. I don't know what to do with this power. I could, it's like a manifester. I can manifest whatever I want. And when I see the stream in the middle and I see steps, you know, right next to it, like here's the stream and right across, it's like these little steps, you know? And then I see this little temple, this little like almost coffin like structure, you know, but if I go underneath the water and come back up, I just feel like I'm a whole new different being. Um, it's pretty weird, but it, it feels so healing, you know, um, I kind of love it, but in the way I'm like, Ooh, that's too much power, you know, be careful of what I manifest. Um, I also see this inside, like I said, it's like a grid. I see like crystal grids, power grids, you know, but I, I see, um, something to do with, um, I see a jar. And I see these group of a, a tribe people They're, I think they could be like Israelites or very biblical. They're very biblical. There's a leader. I don't know if he, it's a prophet, but it seems like a prophet, you know, and I feel like there's this jar and there's herbs and oils and they use it to, for healing, to drinking. It does something. It's very beautiful. It has like flowers or herbs. It's purple, purple for herbs oh, or flowers. Yeah. Yes, inside, and it's it's like liquid, you know, and it, it's so healing. It's like medicine men, medicine woman, and uh, it, it's incredible. You and know what um, that you're describing it's called blue lotus. Oh, okay. That, uh, blue lotus, exactly. I know exactly what you you're. You want to jump in right now? Yeah, can I, is that okay? I'm pretty excited with what you had to say because, like, girlfriend, you're yeah. awesome. You're very good. So yes, it does. It sits on, on a grid line in mother earth and mm -hmm. it is a power generator. That's exactly what it was. And it was both personal cosmic highway. Um, and it had to do with frequencies. It all yes. has frequencies. And now what we need to understand is thousands of years later, the frequencies that we have in the air around us are not the frequencies that they were dealing with when they were building these pyramids and these people um, knew how to be able to work with the elemental energies of the air and, um, and, uh, be able to use it in a way that would charge this pyramid. It had to do with the planetary alignments. It was also, like I said, a cosmic highway, as much as it was a personal ascension highway as well. We could astral travel when we went there. Um, so the water that you're talking about underneath, there is a canal that goes underneath the pyramid and it has the highest concentration of sodium. Well, sodium it is, is an electrical conductor. So when you're going down into those waters, you're going to feel different, more buoyant, more full of energy, more full of life, because that's what that water represents, right? But if you look at that natural flow of water that's underneath that pyramid, um, even that was on purpose because of the energy that it brings, right? Water is a conductor of energy and the amount of salt in it is going to make it more electric in nature, right? So all of it was built to do with energy, um, the grid, the purple lotus that you're talking about. Yes, they even have um, hieroglyphs because when I first remote viewed this, and um, was talking to the guys, uh, to the producer at Gaia TV, and I mentioned it. I mentioned the Blue Lotus, and it was described even on the walls, apparently, um, where they used to use it for um, 
as uh, you know, a sexual stimulant, also for astral travel, it actually increases the bioelectricity within your body, um, making things a lot easier to experience. But yeah, so it's it, it's it's sorry. I'll, you continue. I just I had to say that about the blue lotus because I don't know how many people know about that. But yeah, it, it's thing, and same thing with mana. Here was the other thing that I picked up too. So uh, back then, um, in the mystery schools, and you know, uh, the average person didn't know about this stuff. But mana was monoatomic gold, and they would also um, the pharaohs and the kings. Um, royalty would eat this stuff to up their, their bio, their bio resonance. Um, so manna bread was also something that, that they would ingest as well as the blue Lotus. So, Oh, wow. Like my uh, jaws uh, dropping. I was like, is this really happening? It's, it felt so, <laughs> so like incredible. I was like, Oh my God. I feel like <laughs> my whole body was turning gold. Like I was just <laughs> Oh, yeah, gold well, color. It changed the skin. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, Ooh, I like this. This, this is the m- amazing energy that I'm feeling. Ooh. And you know what? And I also see there's also part of the pyramids. I don't know what kind of rituals they were doing, but um, some kind of rituals for, the, I mean, of course, for their gods and goddesses, whoever they were praying to, you know, of course I did see offerings for them, but inside a particular pyramid, there was some kind of table or some kind of structure right next to the stream. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like they're all, they do some kind of offerings and they yeah. have their hands up like this. It's like they make offerings and they still do it. But I, I, I just see this big concrete table next to this water canal you were describing. But I feel like there's some, some ceremony ritual and they're like, it's like they're offering something to the gods and goddesses, the sun, Ra, or whoever, you know, I'm just seeing a lot. I'm just seeing so many different informations that's just coming in. And I see the one eye horse as well. I mean, I'm just seeing too much. <laughs> I'm just like, which, which era am I in? Like the time, it's just going so fast and fast and fast. It's like almost like this. Um, stimulation, stimulator, like you're in the stimulator and everything is just shaking and shaking and shaking. Vibrations. So yeah. Here, so here's the thing. When you're talking about the altar um, and the stream of water, right? Because yeah. that is an electrical source. Do you see it inside of a cave? Because that what you're describing yes. is actually an auditorium. And okay. they have these steps. They look like steps, but that's where everyone would sit. Um, mm-hmm. And there's a big rock that's above it. And it's this big like a statue, a, like, a, like a rock statue as well in front of it. There's there, like a table there rock structure and, a, and yeah. like, a, like a, a, some particular statue or god that Just, they worship. Yeah. I don't know who that is, a raw or... I don't know who they're, um, maybe you can explain it. Go ahead. Well, um, I know that, I know that they're, that I, I believe, I think I know the place that you are remote viewing, um, because I came across that same place when I was remote viewing it. And yes, there is, it looks like a stream that, um, has been carved out because you can walk on either side of it. Right. Um, and I, I saw the big cave with the auditorium and I know that that's where it was their church or where they would practice their rituals. And, um, that area has a different, uh, bio resonance than, um, than the pyramids. And I wish I could have gone in June to be able to see what I see in my head and match it to where it is. Um, but I think, from my understanding that that auditorium place it's in the same area as the pyramids, but it's not in the pyramids from what I understand. It's, um, it's, it's close. It's close to it. It's within that vicinity of the, of the, of the pyramids. Um, but any, anyways, (laughs) it is all connected because even underground, there is underground tunnels that, um, are out or that are underneath the pyramids that lead all the way to Alexandria. So it's, what were they doing with it? What was the purpose of the time? I truly believe that they are energy generators. And right now they're, 
they're no longer in use. They don't have the same resonance now that they did before. It's kind of like looking at an old museum. You know what I mean? That, that doesn't work anymore. So here's the interesting thing. So when we were putting um, the tour together that I was supposed to do in June, um, one of the things that I was told by the tour guide was that we're not allowed to pray, chant, or hum in any of the pyramids. And so that really stood out to me. Why? Why can't we chant or hum? Um, and that's when I saw, oh, because that's what opens up the stargates, because everything is resonance right? And we do hold the power within ourselves. And so I truly believe that certain chants um, would open up certain stargates. And one thing that I did pick up too as well um, is that I don't think it was just one civilization um, necessarily working on these pyramids because I picked up 12 different energetic signatures or almost like there was 12, um, 12 tribes. Yes. Uh, the bloodlines. Yeah. That yeah, I was seeing. It was like something to do yeah. with bloodlines, you know, and they didn't want any interbreeding because of the, you've heard of the blue blood, Royal blue blood. Well, yes. each bloodline came with very specific, unique talents and traits that they could, um, that they could do. And I think that, um, by, by, you know, um, by mixing the races that they were then coming, they didn't want that because they thought it would dilute the power that they held within themselves. So anyways, I think that, um, I think that we can't really even experience what they did way back then because our resonances are so off. I truly believe that when those pyramids were at the height you know, of operations, it was only certain specific people that could go into it anyways. Um, you know, whether it was the Kings or the Pharaohs or the people that had that resonance. Um, it's just like when I remote viewed, um, the staffs. So here's the thing, you know, how on the hieroglyphs, you always see, um, the staff, the on the onk in one hand, and then the staff in another, well, I truly believe that that represented the negative and positive energy. And what I was shown on how they built it, so you were right, it is a lot of mind control and a lot of um, telekinesis, um, telepathy, uh, you know, being able to move objects with your mind, but it was a little bit more than that. They used the magnetism. Yeah, they uh, had hands. I was drawn by their hands, their energy of their hands. Yes. And what it was, do with energy conducive. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was, it was also what was in their hands that mm -hmm. mattered most because it's just like a battery. You have the positive and the negative, right? Well, what was shown to me was, um, like I said, everything is vibration. Everything is energy. So how they moved these huge blocks and placed them into place. So how do I explain this in the easiest way? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not very good at science, but this is the way it was described to me by my guides. So if you match anything with its own resonance, it will blow up. That's how doctors get rid of kidney stones. They match the vibration of the kidney stone with its own vibration, right? Using a laser, it oscillates, it blows up and you pee it out. So bear with me. We'll say this big rock in Egypt has a resonance of an eight, an eight, eight, whatever. We'll just say that its personal resonance was an eight. Well, in order to move that rock without blowing it up, because if you throw the energy of an eight at that rock, it's just going to blow up, right? It can't hold its own resonance. It will blow up. So what they did was you need an applied force on the bottom. So we'll say a 10 or a 12, the weight of a 10 or a 12, right? And you need to guide it into place, but you can't blow it up. So you guide it in with, we'll say a nine. Does it, am I making sense? So it was, it was literally brought up through magnetism. It was like, yes. it, was, it was using um, the magnetics in the air, the, the elements, all of it on top of their own personal resonance. But the thing was, is like you were saying, it wasn't slaves that, that built that. I truly believe that it was an honor to build that thing. And it yes, was it's like high, high individual beings, but absolutely. the way they were moving it, it's like their own energy with the air, with the ether. And it's like, I could just push it with the right amount current. Totally. 
you know, frequency, it's like, like boom. It, it's so hard to explain. It's incredible. I was like, oh my God. Like, oh, it's like a magnetic field. All yes, it's like right? a magnet. Like, 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 attracting, or, like putting yeah, two I mean, magnets together, two energies yeah. together. Absolutely. So here's the thing. When you have two magnets going together, they're going to stick together. But what happens when they have the repulsion? It's actually the repulsion energy that they used in order to lift it. Right. If that makes sense and place it. In yes. There. Oh, it does. That's incredible. And I think that those staffs had something to do with it. And that's why you see them um, in, in the hands of of all of the hieroglyphs and everything. And the other thing too, that I know is that those hieroglyphs this is what spirit showed me. They can be read in two different ways. They can be read as you see them right through the Egyptian hieroglyphs and language and interpreted that way. But when I remote viewed them, I actually saw them glowing in gold. So it was interesting. Yeah, the gold color I was seeing. Gold. Yeah. Yeah. I was seeing gold. Yeah. It was bright, bright, bright gold. And when I was remote viewing them, they would literally pop off of the wall and glow gold. And it was like, Ooh, I bet you I could read that from there. I bet you I could read that. <laughs> you know, because of the way it just made sense to me. It, it, and it wasn't, it wasn't, um, you know, the stories and stuff that, that modern day says that it says is not what I was picking up. I was picking, Oh no, 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 no. There's a whole other story. There's a whole, these are, the instructions. Yes. Yeah. I feel like there was instructions that only people can access to, to yeah. and it's like you only certain type of beings can enter in and access the codes and information, um, which is incredible that I was seeing. Um, so yeah, that is, I, I did see that. Like I, even though I could go in, but I, I just had that access to go in because my, I guess my frequency was so um, in a different, I guess, depending on my frequency, it allowed me to go in. But I feel like this is the type of for God's royal, you know, high frequency, like higher beings that have access to them who are able to do to depending on what dimension they're on or what frequency they're on their body or in my body soul. So speaking of that, um, it's interesting because the planetary energy changes uh, four times a year and they knew that. So on the solstices. Um, one of the things that I saw, uh, was that there was actually two Sphinx, not just one, and they had crowns on, on their head. And I saw a metal rod coming out of the middle of the Sphinx's head. And when I described that to the tour guide, he kind of freaked out. He's like, Patricia, no one knows about that. No one knows about the rod. I cannot believe you just said that. Um, because I saw this great rumble. It was almost like lightning struck it or something. And I saw the crown break in two. But the coolest thing was, was why and why this crown was created. It had 10 or sorry, not 10. It had 12 spikes, just like the, um, just like the calendar, 12 months, right? So what would happen was on certain planetary alignments, the, um, like on the solstice and stuff, when the sun would come up, it would shine through the crown and show exactly where the stargates were. And, and that, I believe that there was a lot of rituals around the solstices um, and on certain specific uh, times of year. And it had to do with the incoming frequencies, the incoming energy and the sun, all of that stuff. But that crown, if you watched where the sun would align out of it, um, even that was on purpose, you know, the way it was designed would literally point <laughs> to where the stargate was. And then you had to be the proper resonance to enter it though. That's the thing. That's why I'm saying none of it even works right now because our energy on this planet is so messed up. Look at what we've done between satellites, 5G, um, you know, 3G computers, everything that's out there. We don't even know what it feels like anymore to, uh, to actually have a natural state because we're being bombarded with all of this artificial frequencies all the time. So we don't really know what our resting, you know, natural state is. It's been oh, taken. Wow. Yeah, I agree with that. That is that is interesting. I had a Patricia. I, had, I saw three different scenes. Uh, I wonder if you can explain this. 
um, I, I saw like a, a pyramid and I, it just reminded me of the Mayans where they had the stairs all the way to the top of the pyramid and there was a throne and there was like a, almost like, like, I guess like a, like a royal, I guess during that time was a God or, uh, or King or uh, um, Pharaoh and he's sitting on like some kind of chair on top of the pyramid and the sun is rising. It's so bright. Um, like I, said, I see the sun shining on him and he's on top of the pyramid sitting on some throne and there's like a stairway that's going up right in the middle of the pyramid. Can you explain why I'm seeing that? What does that mean? Um, okay. I don't know if you pick that up. If you, well, it's interesting because the one that came to my mind right away was the one in Chichen Itza. Have you been to that one? Mm -mm. Okay. Cause it, it, um, there's a pyramid in Chichen Itza that has those stairs up like that. And, um, at certain times of the year during the solstice, it actually looks like a snake coming down oh, there okay. and they, the people who created that were brilliant. They were acoustic masters because if you stand right in the, at the bottom and in the middle of that pyramid and you clap your hands, it sounds exactly like the bird that it was named after. It oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's super cool. And it's only when you stand in the middle of it. So how did they do that? I know that that was an on purpose. It was also a key to our understanding of what they were working with at that time. Right. So if you saw the King sitting on top of that pyramid, he was getting a download. He was getting yeah. down because what the way the pyramids worked was the energy would come down the middle and spread out through the corners. Right. And so he was being that kind yes, of that's how I'm seeing it. Thought. Yeah. Yeah. It happened during yeah. certain seasons though. It wasn't like he was doing, it was doing it like he or she was doing, it was, I saw a max, um, masculine energy, but it was during certain seasons. Oh, like you said the that. planetary shift. Um, it wasn't like, like maybe qu the, every quarter or I don't know. It was really weird. It wasn't like every day, but it was just oh, sitting yeah. there and it would, it was very important to receive the information. Well, it's, it, it opens up the gateways and that's yeah. you'll, you'll hear that there's so much uh, ritual, um, ritual magic and stuff like that, that happens on the solstice. I'd be very honest. I don't touch anything dark. I don't, I, I've never even touched a tarot card to be honest with you. I just say what I see, um, you know, no crystal balls or anything like that for me, but, uh, but it is, it's, it's, it's all about the resonance that you carry, even when we're doing our work, like the, the, one of the reasons why I was like, no, I got to cancel on Sunday was because when, if I'm in pain or I'm not feeling well, it totally messes up the connection. I can't see crap when I'm not feeling very well. I, I don't know uh, if you're the same, but I know that same thing, like if I'm worried about stuff that's going on in my life or something, it messes up that vibrational frequency that connects me with that information, right? So it really, really is all about resonance and, and where our consciousness is at because and all of us have the ability to be able to remote view. Like I said, it's just who's who's practicing it, who's doing it. So yeah. I think that I think that back then the reason why um, these people were glowing as much as they did and they looked as radiant as they did was they did spend a lot of time in ritualistic prayer and what they were putting in their body they treated it like a temple. We don't have that same resonance because we're out eating McDonald's or Wendy's. You know what I mean? That's yeah. not that that's not what our body needs um, in order to be operating at its fullest capacity. Right. And they even even say, you know, how much of our DNA um, they don't understand where doctors are like, oh, yeah, 90 uh, percent is junk DNA. No, it's not. It tells the stories of our past lives. It holds our gifts and abilities that we just have laying dormant within us. Right. So I, I think that. Um, I think that these pyramids are hard to replicate also because our consciousness is nowhere near what theirs was. And I think that's yeah. why it stumped so many people. Yeah. And the other one I was seeing, Patricia, that's so funny. You talked about, you know, uh, the thing, the ritual they would use on their bodies. I saw this beautiful woman. I, I think I must have saw Nefertiti. I don't know if it was Nefertiti. She had a long, like a, a beautiful face structure. Her skin was very... 
um, tan, very dark, very dark color. And then she, she, had, her, she was wearing this long um, crown, like, um, like almost like a hat or, well, it's a headset. Um, it's just from a Nefertiti. Um, but she was wearing this beautiful dress and she was very decked out, very golden, um, very wealthy. And she had this brown jar. And I don't know what, she was smearing something all over her body. I don't know if this is oil or some, or it was just like she was rubbing everything all over her body. And I don't know why I was saying that. Hmm. I was just wondering if you saw that too. I mean, she's very symbolic, but um, when you just said, the, you know, the rituals, but I was just seeing that if you saw that too, uh, what she was doing, I just saw her holding a brown, beautiful jar and there was some kind of liquid or something she was smearing all over her body. Well, I know that, um, I know it, it sounds like you're talking about anointing oil. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. It was very I, interesting. Because I, I know that um, back in the day, they would anoint the feet of, of, you know, people who'd come into homes or bless them. But it makes me wonder if what you're seeing um, is some sort of anointed oil. I'm not sure. That I yeah, because I saw her inside the, inside the temple or inside the, uh, that's why I was wondering if you picked it up. And the last one I you saw. Know, I would assume it was something like that then. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And lastly, I wanted just to add, um, did you see anything where um, we talked some about, I did a video on Library of Alexandria, and I still see it, but I feel like it's hidden, or it, it exists in Egypt, they can find it, but it's like almost like where the pyramids are in the underground tunnels, I feel like there's some structure, it's made out of maybe I would say, not brick, but maybe clay structure. And it's like, it almost like it collapsed or it's damaged really bad, but I feel there's a lot of books inside there. I don't well, know if you picked that up. I know that there is hidden technology. Under yeah, but there are books. There were books all over the ground inside this little structure oh. that looked like it collapsed or it was just, it broke down, it was burned down, but it was just rubble and there was just books all over the area. Well, I don't know if this is Library of Alexandria. <laughs> That I'm not, I'm not sure, but like I'm trying to scan as you're describing. Yeah, I was scanning that. It just came. And what to came me. what came to mind was I know that under the right paw of the Sphinx, the one that's left, um, uh, there is there is hidden technology under there, and it makes me wonder. Okay, is that that library that you're talking about? I'm not sure, but the rum the rubble that you're talking about, I know that there was a second Sphinx there that was destroyed. I know yes. that. And so it makes me wonder, okay, did they destroy it because they knew what was underneath it? Is that what you're remote viewing? Yes. I was picking that uh, up. I don't know why it was, it was rumble. It was like it collapsed and there was something inside that's very, very hidden, very imp yeah. important. Or I don't know. I thought it was books or something, something that doesn't want to be found. So even if they didn't have books back then, we'll say they had scrolls that can yeah. be across information. Yeah. You know what I mean? Our, our, our logical mind is going, oh, they're books, but maybe they could be scrolls or something that holds the information and um, the sacred information that they were trying to hide at that time. But yeah. I know that the one Sphinx was destroyed at one point. Um, so I don't know, maybe. It, it maybe that's one I'm seeing. Yeah. Cause I saw, I'm seeing the one that's destroyed collapse and there's some document or some, it's like, it's paper, like some, some, something written like letter, like it's, it's their scriptures or their scripts or whatever. That's why I was like, their documents or something that's hidden underneath it, but it's near the pyramids near um, where the area is. And it's, it's like, it's, it's like, I guess it's sacred to them or th this is information that's not supposed to be found yeah. or they keep it sacred or keep it hidden. Well, and it it's unknown. That's what I'm just trying. It's unknown to the public. Absolutely. There's something in there that we're not allowed to see or touch or even know. Um, I think, I think that there is so much information buried there and, we haven't even scratched the surface with the technology that they had um, that's hidden in plain sight. It really is hidden in plain sight. Um, and like I said, I agree with you that it was to do with DNA and resonance. They were different people back then. 
um, than we are today and that had a lot more capabilities than we do today. Um, and like I said, those staffs had something to do with how they were raising those huge, huge bricks or blocks. Um, yeah, it's just, they were working with the energy in a different way than we know how to do now. But I mean, we do, science has proven like um, with magnets and stuff that we can have, you, I've even seen them for sale on, um, on Facebook ads, you know, where it's the plant, um, a little plant and it's hovering above a magnetic base, right? Think of that in, in the lines of principles of nature um, and apply that to the pyramids. And that's how they were able to move things. That's what I saw. So okay. I, think, I think there's a lot of hidden technology um, in plain sight. Wow. Patricia, I'm giving it to you now. Would you like to add anything more about the pyramids? I'm done. <laughs> I can't uh, add any more than that. Let me just... Okay, I will say this, because I'm not sure if you picked this up, but um, so I remote viewed the pyramids and the area around the pyramids. And one of the things that I saw was that there were these big walls that actually went all around um, the city, almost like a compound. And I saw that um, there was um, there was 13 doors that led in, but 12 of them were traps. One of them you could access. So behind those other doors that were traps, and this is how they knew if you were invited into the city, you'd use the right door. Or if you were invited into this sacred space, you'd use the right door. Well, I saw these moats, uh, um, almost like a, a slough that went around the outside perimeter of it. And I could see, um, and I could see a guard standing there at these gates. And if that gate opened, he was ordered to kill that person. Um, and if they would have walked through, they would have fallen into the moat. So I believe that that was around the city that I, that um, like around the pyramids where they live, because it didn't look like a desert. It was plush, it was green. Um, there was ocean, the ocean um, has literally receded quite a bit um, because I see it as a lot more lush and green and tropical and, uh, and beautiful like that. So I don't know. I don't know what, what else to add. I'm just trying to think of what else I saw. I saw the doors around the city. Um, the energy generators, the, the DNA. And I believe here's the other thing too, is that I think that the Egyptian government do know what those things do and like i said that's why you're not allowed to chant or hum um or pray or sing inside of these pyramids and i think it's because you could activate something without knowing that you're activating it yeah right? oh i want to tell you it's, um i wanted to say when i was first remote viewing i could hear chanting and i did hear chanting and i wanted to tell you that because i was like i hear yes. chanting I don't so, know if that was back in that day, but I, I heard chanting. They <laughs> yep, they would have. They would have been chanting in there yeah. for days on end. Fasting and chanting was the way to open up stargates and, and astral travel, intergalactic travel, all of that stuff. Um, and uh, so when, for people who don't understand the power of chanting, um, when you're doing OM, when you're seeing those chanting monks going OM, they're actually producing 7.83 hertz within their body. OM is 7.83 hertz. So you do that enough and you're gonna feel tranced out with everything. You're gonna feel one with the universe because you're producing that resonance within your body, right? Everything is frequency. And that's why we can use binaural beats to astral travel. It's different states, altered states of consciousness that will help us be able to get out go get information on a target and bring it back. Right. Do you use binaural beats when you, um, when you do any remote viewing? Um, I try to find the really good ones, but they don't haven't been working for me. I just act like the way I am able to remote view is I have to distract myself with exercising or running. I need yeah. the energy and it clears out my whole aligns my whole body for some reason, but I try to find online, but it's, it's so low. I can't, 
like I I heard you can buy some headsets. Like people have the headsets, and you can buy those. I don't know if that works, but I haven't found a really good one. I'm struggling for you. Okay, I have the remote viewing frequencies from the Monroe Institute that I got when I was taking level three, the advanced course. So I'll send them to you. They're rad. Oh, okay, great. Um, and and I you can link it in the bio. I don't mind sharing it with everyone. These are the frequencies that I that you can use to astral travel, do target information, looking for information on targets. Um, my God, you can even win the lottery with this thing. Oh my God, I'm a I'm not a YouTube now. I'm a rich woman joking. <laughs> yeah, these these are pretty amazing frequencies, and you can't find them anywhere. They're not on YouTube. Um, I haven't been able to come across them for sale at all. So yeah, I will just send them to you and you can put the little link in, in the little description for them. But uh, yeah, binaural beats definitely helps you get into that altered state of mind. And so does chanting. That was the point of what yes. I was going off about. So does oh, chanting. okay. Yes. Um, Patricia, is there anything else you would, how's Canada doing? I know um, everybody's been um, asked, uh, where are me, Patricia, actually are going to be doing the energy report remote viewing for August, 2021. So that is our next video together. And I'm super excited about that guys. Patricia will be there. Um, so Patricia, is there any, I know you have a busy day. Is there anything else you would like to say or anything um, yeah. you want to update us on the last time we spoke? Um, anything we should know or anything about you? We you already talked about your upcoming workshop. I'm super excited about that. Anything else you want, you know, the listeners to know? Well, just be super, super aware of where your consciousness is going right now, you guys, because we are in the middle of a spiritual war and the greatest way these things can attack us or, um, really throw us for a loop is it merges with your consciousness where it feels like you're having a conversation with yourself only it's super negative watch out for that energy check and see if this is something that I would say to myself would I normally talk to myself like this if not say a prayer of protection ask Archangel Michael to step in and completely cut any narratives that are not of your highest good because I have noticed um, in a lot of people's auric fields, it's almost like a dark cloud right around here. And I know that that is, is their line of thinking and what we think we become, right? Our thoughts become our actions, our actions become our reality. So more so than anything else, I would say our consciousness is under fire here right now. So watch your thoughts and wives, women, girlfriends out there, be kind to your man right now, because there is a massive war on men's consciousness, um, demasculine, uh, demasculinizing men out there, um, you know, making them the bad ones. And I've got to tell you, it's an energy. It is an energy. Not all guys are douchebags. So we got to love them, show them the support, show them that it's okay. Men's mental health, it, it's got, we got to start looking at that. Uh, men aren't talking about what's going on in here and in here. And that's dangerous when, when it does, right? Suicide is on, is rampant right now. And it's because people aren't talking about how they're feeling. So um, do a check-in, do a little mental check-in, you guys, on, on your men and on ourselves. And if you find that that negative narrative won't shut up, become aware of it and ask for spiritual help because it is coming from the spirit realm. Most of it is anyways. So. Yeah. I noticed that Patricia, there's a lot of angry people. Like yeah. wherever I go, it's just a yeah. lot of angry, angry people just and with no their mask and just kind of like yep. miserable. And then it's it just, I, I never seen, I've been fighting for, Oh gosh, with so many people. Uh, for how many months? And I just noticed the energy has completely become very hatred, angry, divided even more. And I was feeling like really sad and depressed because I was like, wait a minute, we're just separating. We're, you know, there, I just feel like the love vibration is just breaking apart. Yeah. I, you know, and I'm trying to be positive, but I just noticed everywhere I go, everybody's just angry, yelling, upset. Everybody's yelling at each other, you know, and it was, it really broke my heart, you know? to see well, that 
it's empath burnout too, right? Yeah. If you're very sensitive to energy right now, oh my God, it's going to be amplified. So this is when we have to be kinder with ourselves, get into the back into that state of grace, doing what we love, learning healthy boundaries, be careful what you're tolerating because you're teaching people how to treat you. And I, I mean that you've got to set healthy boundaries right now. That has never been more important because it's, it's almost like a survival of the fittest energy out there right now. It's not, it, you're not seeing a lot of compassion and, and kindness. So as light workers and as ones that lead the way and show people how to get back to a state of happiness, we have to exude that ourselves. And it's very important that we take the time out to recoup, regenerate ourselves. And so we're not feeling that empath burnout Um, because yeah, there's a lot of people that need our light. Yes. And Patricia, last thing to finish up the live stream. Can you talk about your, I think you're doing, um, I, I, I did see something about your pyramid that you have, I guess, on meditations, you're doing live meditations and also talk about the healing prayers you do, you know, on, um, live stream. And And I always share that with everyone guys, if you guys need those healing prayers, Patricia always does a live stream on that. Um, and uh, as well, like I said, Patricia has a website, um, you know, she does different workshop meditations, healing prayers. I really, if people really need it, I really urge everyone, Patricia is a great example to really go to for anything like for those kind of services. Thank you so much. You're so kind. It helps. It does really help. I always share it on my YouTube. I, I, so I do, I've been doing once a month, um, a free online worldwide uh prayer group and it's because i truly believe in the power of prayer i I i'm a science girl i love my science and i have seen so much proof with prayer because it's it's laser focus intended love healing energy right and and that is privy to every single one of us. And the one thing that I love about doing them online is wherever you are in the world, your light you're, you're going to be gaining um, the greatest, most amazing peace that will flow through you because we're all holding each other up in that state of prayer. We're calling in, you know, our creator. Um, we're calling in the guardian angels to come and work with us, to guard, guide and protect us and to help heal us. And I got to tell you, when you've got 100 people online, uh, you know, all in that same state of grace, it isn't just one prayer. And it's just like, you know, what Jesus says in the Bible, when two or more gathered in my name, that's where I am found. That's where miracles are found. And it's true. It's so true. It's an amplified energy. And um, I may have been, you know, my background is Christianity. That's how I was raised. But I truly believe that all paths that that define love as the greatest um, greatest asset that we can ever tune into, it all leads to the same place, that higher dimensional reality of love and grace. So I don't care if you call it God, Buddha, Allah, ultimate energy. It's a space where we can all come together to join and and heal together. And so, yeah, I I started doing little prayer circles online. Um, And I do, I am starting to have my in-class classes again, where uh, I do a sound bath. I do singing bowls um, and I go and I do it live from my pyramid and everyone feels it around the room. When I go around, I do little energy attunements on everyone while they're meditating. Um, I miss having people in yeah in office i miss hugs oh my god i, <laughs> I miss hugs <laughs> i still hug people i always forget I was like, I'm, I'm not contagious i'm good i still do it <laughs> yeah, I, I miss hugs. um you know and they say that we need eight to ten eight to twelve hugs a day to have a balanced energy field so i feel really sorry um for single people out there who've had to make it a year and a half without very many hugs so it's, it's time, it's time for love again. So I, in, I invite you to join me, come and uh, sign up. I'll send you out the zoom code and um, yeah, you'll feel, you'll feel the amazing shift. Great. Well, thank you so much guys. Um, thank you so much, Patricia. I always love remote viewing with you. Um, thank you again for just sharing your day with me. Um, you're such a busy woman, but I appreciate you cause I know you weren't feeling well and I'm so happy you're feeling much better. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, guys, um, Patricia is part of my, she never, she knows she never needs an invitation. Uh -huh. So um, like, yeah. Patricia, you're old, everybody loves you. So uh -huh. they always ask uh -huh. about you, uh -huh. you know, um, so I'm just happy when you come on. I'm like, yes, Patricia's here. Uh -huh. and I feel Let's just make just history. I love, <laughs> I, love I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it, it too. I love working <laughs> with you. Yeah, I got to do more on my YouTube channel for sure. I know. But so. it's, I'm trying to get over that, you know. No, you're a natural. You're a much natural you than know. me. So, like I said, you work well with the camera. I'm just like, oh, wait. Oh, yeah. No, I feel it's the same hurt. It's hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Pisces self, but um, yeah. So Patricia, thank you again. Again, Patricia does have a YouTube channel, guys. I will provide her YouTube channel, her website, and her upcoming workshop again for everyone who wants to join. And I actually had subscribers who already been joining your classes, and they love it. Super One cool. of them, oh, subscriber was telling me about your class she went to. She said it was amazing. Aww, so she loved it. And she so told awesome. me about it. I was like, yeah, that's <laughs> Patricia there. You're, you're coming to the quantum psychic course. Yeah, I will. You know? yeah. Nice. I had awesome. some people sign up. They just told me they just signed up. So they're excited about that. Thank you. I'm so, I, I feel so honored to have met you. And Oh, and me too. Part of this. I felt like we were mm -hmm. sisters back in the totally. days or past life. <laughs> have to be soul sisters. Yeah, soul sisters. <laughs> yes. Okay. So guys, thank you again. And we'll see Patricia. Um, I believe our next um, live stream we're doing together is the energy report for the August. So I'm very excited about that. So Patricia, enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you soon, okay? Thank you. God bless Love you. Bye, Bye guys. Take care.